Good morning, Milan. Look at that. It's a beautiful day. Lunchtime. Boom. Check it out. What they do in Milan. Fresh water. Boom. Pick a stick. Dip it. Boom. The land of white carbs. Gotta love it. It's super loud. <laughs> it's a little, a little loud. Hey guys, it's Alex Trelli. Welcome back to the bet sizing series for Ask Alec uh, here from Milan. Today's video is gonna be specifically about small bet sizing. If you haven't already, check out my last Ask Alec video where I do a recap and an overview about bet sizing in general and some of the key things you need to consider when formulating your bet sizing. Uh, a really great video, good intro, and definitely precedes this one. So if you haven't already, check that out and then come back here and watch the video on small bet sizing. So there's three things you really wanna have in your favor when you wanna use a small bet size. One is a situation where you're either, your specific hand is either way ahead or way behind your opponent's hand. So for example, if the flop comes something like ace nine three and you have ace king, it's a situation where if your opponent has you beat, he usually dominates your hand because the hands that beat you, you have very little equity against those hands. If for example, your opponent has a set of nines on an ace nine three board and you have ace king, you're pretty much drawing dead against him. Inversely, if he has a hand which you beat, let's say he has two jacks or nine eight or ace jack, all those hands, your ace king absolutely dominates. So this is a spot where there's very little equity that your opponent has against your hand or you have very little equity against your opponent's hand. In other words, there's not many cards that could come that either improve your hand to beat his or improve his hand to beat yours. This is a great situation to bet really, really small because you wanna entice your opponent to call with a hand that's drawing dead against yours and you also wanna protect your hand the times that you're drawing dead against your opponents. Also, in addition to betting small here, another great reason to bet small is that you, pr you protect your hands the times that you wanna bluff. So if the board is ace nine three and you don't have ace king, it's a great situation to bluff with a small bet size because the hands that have no equity that your opponent has, something like Queen Jack, for example, if your opponent has absolutely nothing, he's gonna fold that hand regardless of the size that you bet. So you don't really need to bet huge here because your opponent's gonna react the same no matter what his hand range is. So it's a great situation to bet small. Another situation where you wanna bet small on the smaller side is when you have a low stack to pot ratio. So if, for example, the pot's 100 and you have $100 stack size remaining, it could be a good situation to bet small because if you bet very big in this situation where you have a low stack to pot ratio, then you're committing yourself to the entire pot. If you have 200 and the pot's 100, if you bet 50, you aren't necessarily committed to this pot. Whereas if you bet 100 or 150, then you're committing yourself to the pot and you don't allow your opponent to maneuver in the hand, you don't give yourself any wiggle room to get away from your hand or play the hand on future streets. In conjunction with a stack to pot ratio, another thing to consider from a strategical standpoint when using a small bet size is really what do you want to accomplish in the hand? If you want to have the hand be a multiple street hand, in other words, you want to have the hand play on the flop, the turn, and the river, then it's a great spot to bet small on the flop because you set the hand up to be a multiple street hand. Let's say we use the same situation where the pot's $100 and you'll have, you have a $200 stack. Well, by choosing a small bet size on the flop, say something like $35 or $40, you now set the hand up to be a three street hand where your bet sizing on the flop allows you to bet small on the flop, small on the turn, and then have wiggle room on the river to make a decision. So by using a small bet size on the flop, it allows you to set up the hand to make decisions on subsequent streets. So inversely, of course, if you don't wanna have decisions to make on later streets, you're gonna use a big bet size on the flop and commit yourself to the pot, or at least commit yourself all in on the turn, regardless of what, hand, regardless of what card actually comes. 
All right, so the last reason you're gonna wanna use a small bet size is depending on what you want to accomplish. So the key thing here, I'm gonna give you three specific reasons to use a small bet size, depending on what action you wanna accomplish, what your goal is in the hand. The very key here is to make sure you have a balance of all three of these reasons. If you're choosing one of these actions too often, you're gonna to be too exploitable, too easy to play against, and your betting patterns are gonna be too predictive and too uh, representative of the actual hand that you have. So the first time you wanna use the small bet sizing is when you wanna get immediate value from your hand, but you don't really wanna to bet too big because your hand can't extract value from that many other hands. So if you have a second pair type hand, and there's some hands that could call you that are worse than yours, but not a lot, or you're afraid you're gonna get called by a lot of better hands, it's a great time to use a small bet size. You get worse hands to call you, you entice worse hands to enter the pot, but at the same time, you're not risking too much money by betting a huge amount. The second reason you wanna bet small is to protect the times that you're value betting thinly or value betting with a weak hand, you wanna bet small with a really, really strong hand. If you watch my hand of the day from last week, uh, you'll see that I had a full house in a time where I wanted to bet small to protect the times that I was value betting thinly or that I had a bluff or that I didn't have an absolute monster. So by incorporating big hands, strong premium made hands, using a small bet size, you balance your range and you protect the times that you're value betting thinly. You make it really tough for your opponent to know what you're doing, whether you have a weak hand or a strong hand. So you should make sure that you're balancing your range between having big hands for uh, value and weak hands that you're value betting so that your opponents can never figure out what you have. The third reason to use a small bet sizing is when you wanna get a great price on your bluffs. If you don't wanna risk too much money and bet a huge amount on a bluff, you could bet small and you get a great price on your bluff. Your opponent doesn't have to fold that often when you bet half the pot as a bluff as opposed to betting the full pot or over betting. Uh, your bluffs have to work a lot more often contingent on how much you bet. So the more that you bet relative to the pot, the more often your bluffs have to work. By choosing a small bet size with a bluff, you're getting a great price on your bluff and your opponent doesn't have to fold that often in order for your bluff to be profitable. A great time to choose a small bet sizing on a bluff is when your opponent will react the same regardless of the hand that he has. So if your opponent is gonna fold regardless of how much you bet, for example, he either has a strong made hand or he missed a draw, it's a great time to bet small on a bluff. If he has a strong made hand, he's gonna call you regardless of how much you bet. If he missed a draw, he's gonna fold regardless of how much you bet. So you don't get any additional value by betting big because your opponent is gonna react the same regardless of the hand range he has. So the key thing here, again, I wanna reiterate, is that you incorporate big hands into your small bet sizing so that you can take advantage of the time that you're value betting thinly and the times that you're bluffing. Too often players make the classic mistake of using their bet size to represent the actual hand that they have. So if you're always betting small when you're either bluffing or have a weak hand, then it's too easy to play against you and your opponents will always know that they should call you because you're either bluffing or have a weak hand or they're gonna bluff raise you. So the key here to balancing your small bet sizing is incorporating monster strong hands using a small bet size to confuse your opponents and protect yourself the times that you're bluffing. So I hope you took something away from this video. Check back next week, subscribe to my channel uh, right here because next week we're gonna cover over bets and we'll have a hand of the day that actually ties into this as well. So we're gonna have Ask Alec that about over bets from a theory strategic standpoint and an awesome hand of the day to feature uh, all the strategic stuff behind that as well. So subscribe to the channel, more stuff coming at your way. Hope you guys enjoyed the Ask Alex series. See you guys next week. Ciao.